photos and videos with these guys and who that questions I get the most. In the previous year, every photo letter asking me to identify an arthropod in a photo or video included exactly them. These insects live in most houses, both in private and in apartment buildings. And there is more than a 50% chance they live in your house too. And from now, when you encounter them in your kitchen or bathroom, you will know that they are book lice, also known as bark lice, also known as bark flies, also known as sausages. These insects are from the group Socoptera. It has a little more than 5,000 species. Most of them live in the wild in the tropics and subtropics, but there are also species distributed in the temperate zone. And among them are synanthropes that have mastered human housing and structures, and you may meet them at home when they breed in large numbers. Uh, what do you need to know about them if you find them in your home? Uh, first, they are not parasites. They pose no danger to humans, they do not bite anyone, do not cause disease, although theoretically, like any insects, uh, they can be a source of allergens. Uh, second, most of the 5000 species of the sausages are generally harmless. Moreover, sometimes they are even somewhat useful. Uh, for example, one girl sent me pictures of Barklaus, most likely Dripteryx domestica, which is a very common insect that has managed to spread throughout Europe, North America, parts of uh, Asia and Africa. Uh, exactly pictures and videos of these species I receive for identification most often. So they feed on mold, lichens, wet organic matter and dust, that is, they act as sanitarians. Some people who know this do not even fight them in the house, but treat them as a useful and autonomous pet corner. Such a small fries huddle under the bathtub or in flower pots, eat something, clean up microscopic trash, do not hurt anyone and add some kind of life and fun to the home. But there are also pests among book lice. The most famous and common among them are common book louse Lipochelis divinatorius and Lipochelis bostrichophila. The first two of them feed on all kinds of organic debris. In nature, in their natural habitat, Lipochelis divinatorius uh, lives in the nests of birds and burrowing mammals, eating the, the bedding and food remains of the nest owner. And uh, when they wind up in human habitation, they chew on everything uh, they can get calories from. Breadcrumbs, exfoliating skin, leaves falling off, house plants, the mold fungi, small dust litter. But they also often damage the glue in the bindings of old books, herbariums, insect collections and uh, various groceries. And Lipochelis bostrichophila is one of the most well-known and important pests of stored products. Although it lives mostly in grain stores and warehouses, it is very often found in uh, households as well. So when some of sausages can be tolerated at home, another species is better to exterminate immediately, so they do not spoil anything. By the way, uh, book lice are really relatives of the real lice head lice and pubic lice. Lice and sausages have a general ancestor, but in the process of evolution these insects took uh, different paths and divided their spheres of influence. Uh, most probably their common ancestor lived as book lice do in nature today, in the nests of birds and rodents, feeding on the dry grass, feathers and uh, wool from the bedding of these nests. Some of its descendants followed in its footsteps and continued the work of their ancestors, became modern book lice and still masticate dry organic debris. Uh, but another descendants began to eat fluff and feathers right on the body of the birds and mammals in which uh, nests uh, they lived, and fluffer adapted to a permanent life in the birds' uh, feathers and mammals' hair. For example, compare the book louse and the chewing louse Gimarasiella tovarnike, a parasite of passerine birds. You will agree that they are quite similar. Or here is a book louse and a head louse. Although they are very distant from each other phylogenetically, 
similarities between the appearance are also noticeable. But again, neither wild sausage nor book lice bite people or pets. If you find book lice at home and at the same time find some bites on yourself, it means that some other arthropods else are living in your house in addition to bark lice. Third, uh, no, fourth, synanthropic book lice are easy enough to identify, especially if you look at them with a magnifying glass or through a microscope. They either have no wings like common book lice or they have purely symbolic wings like Doripteryx domestica that do not allow these insects to fly. At the same time, sauces have a very massive head with strong gnawing jaws. Two different people who sent me photos of book lice for identification thought they were termites which also have a very large head relative to the body. This is a typical example of the convergence of traits. Both bark lice and termites feed on coarse, hard to crush food that they have to gnaw on very stubbornly. So they both have developed very large gnawing jaws with massive musculature, all of which leads to large size at the head. But for me, the most characteristic distinguishing feature of many, though not all book lies, is their jumping. Here, for example, is a video of a viewer trying to touch a bark louse and it jumps away. Of all the insects that can be found in modern living spaces, only fleas and sausages jump. There are also springtails. They also make jumps, but confusing a springtail with a book louse is a little more difficult than to confuse an ostrich with a seal. Perhaps in some apartments crickets can live. They also jump, but to be honest I have never seen crickets in a normal well-kept house, and even more so in an apartment. So if you have a normal well-groomed apartment, and there some insects are jumping, it's either book lice or fleas. You can't confuse them with each other. Fleas are dark, shiningly smooth and biting people and animals. Sausages are light, don't bite anyone and crawl around in garbage and dump corners. And certainly, if such an insect jump, you can be calm. This is not a bed bug, not a tick and not a cockroach. It is not difficult, by the way, to distinguish between relatively harmless, for example, Doripteryx and uh, harmful book lice. Doripteryx and Lipochelis divinatorius are about the same size. Their body length is about 1 mm, while common book louse is slightly larger, up to 2 mm. The common book louse has a grayish body color, Lipochelis divinatorius is yellowish, and Doripteryx is almost generally colorless. At the same time, common book louse and Lipochelis divinatorius do not jump, but only crawl, and the Ripteryx jumps when you try to touch it. And one more amusing nuance. Book lice clusters make quiet but clearly audible and well recognizable sounds similar to the ticking of a table clock. That's why they got the name Death Watch, despite the fact that such sounds do not pose any danger. So, if you find strange insects in your home and hear such a clicking sound near them, you can be almost certainly sure that these are such pseudolice. Uh, fifth, synanthropic book lice gravitate towards humid rooms. That is, if you have them wound up, it means that either you have a very humid place or some neighbor's rooms have got wet. Because of this, such sausages often migrate from dump basements into apartments on first floors. Sometimes they breed in bathrooms in dump corners or in cabinets in the kitchen under the sink or somewhere behind baseboards. At the same time, they often damage dry, long storage groceries and actively reproduce right in bags with cereals. And it happened that they are found in apartments located under attics where these insects breed in birds' nests, in heaps of birds' droppings, and having breeding, they go to colonize apartments. Because of this, it can be difficult to get rid of them. Even if you eliminate bark lice in your apartment, they can breed in a breeding ground somewhere behind the wall or under the floor and crawl back into your home from there. If you don't like them here and don't want to live with them, you need to find their places of breeding and exterminate them here with any inexpensive insecticide remedy. If book lice are found near books, 
it is advisable to go through the books and inspect their shelves. There may be clusters of insects. Books and uh, bookshelves can also be treated with aerosol insecticides. Similarly, they can breed in large numbers in pantries, in kitchen, under bathtubs. Everywhere they can be eliminated either with insecticide sprays or steam from a steam generator. And in most cases they can be exterminated relatively quickly. If it is obvious that they migrate in large numbers from other rooms, then you should already think about the infestation of this hatchery premises. And after this infestation, remove dampness and dirt there so that book lice will not appear and breed there again. And if you don't have confidence in identification and you don't know whether it's a book louse or not, then take pictures, shoot a video and uh, feel free to send it to my mail. I will try to identify your arthropod roommates and you will know whether to sleep easy right away or to call an exterminator first and then sleep peacefully anyway. Mm -hmm.